All right, guys, welcome to another E3 video. So this time they announced the they had a world premiere for Dying Light 2 at the Xbox conference. We'll show you the trailer for that, and then they also have a they call it a gameplay world premiere. So I guess it's technically in game footage and everything. So we'll kind of react to it. I'm gonna show it, then kind of talk about it and kind of compare it to the first game a little bit with my thoughts and everything. So hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for all the support. If you're excited for this game, just destroy that like button. And let's do this, guys. It's been 15 years since the fall. The city is a corpse, and we are the worms. We burrow in it, fighting for every useful piece of land to preserve ourselves from the terrors of the night and the horrors of the day. I know not who can hear my voice. I shall therefore speak a word unto here. Anyone who dares to steal food will be hanged, and their bodies will be exposed. Every day we rise from dust to choose between bad and worse. choices we take to survive will create the world to come. Dying Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we're about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult this with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders, one way or another. After this, you'll start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply has allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level. And that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safe for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water in the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade. But this, in turn, attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you'll have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world, your own city from the apocalypse. Each player's game experience will be unique. And by the way, this is just what happens in the day. At night, well, things tend to get a lot darker. Yeah. 
All right, so the guy did a fantastic job narrating. I'm not going to... I'll try to just kind of talk and give you my insight on what I feel like as far as looking at the gameplay. I know he talks... He, he goes in depth about the choices you make with the water supply example, how it can be like a precious commodity. And depending on how you take these side missions on, it affects the game. He said, like, during the day. I know they're trying to push that nighttime thing on you. So, uh, parkour looks amazing. Game looks fantastic. Techland did a fantastic job updating the first game. I mean, year after... I wouldn't say year after year because it's only been out for a couple of years. But uh, it's, they just constantly updated it. And it makes me really excited that like they're not going to just, like, have a big launch and then they never touch it again. So, when he jumps on the side of his truck, I was like, it looks so smooth. Check this out. Like, that is sick. Are you going to insult this with another... I like how they got the the soundtrack from the first game. I bet the same person composed it. Combat looks pretty smooth still. Still looks really, like, frantic and crisp. So, like, now that you made that choice and killed those guys, he's gonna, like, take you to the example of, you know, many days later, I'm guessing, in in-game days, not, like, actual playing it, but... It's pretty cool, because you'll see, like, water... It's just available. And the guy's, like, washing his hands and stuff, and he turns it off. But he said because of that, by but making that choice, you're on a different side, and then it's just... It, I guess it's a game of, like, whose side you want to be on at that so point. I don't know if it's, like, an ever-changing world or what, but it seems like... So if you get on their bad side, yeah, so he's talking about them, like, just... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing so it's going to be kind of like, I wouldn't say like Far Cry 5, because they didn't really have a lot of choices you make, but a lot of games coming up will have a lot of choices, so really excited to see where this game goes. I think that weapon looked awesome, so if I'm not mistaken, though, the setting for this just looks, I don't know, if it's not in the same area, it looks like it's somewhere else. So... Okay, I guess referring to Far Cry, so you can do side missions and progress through the story. I'm guessing this might have something kind of like that, where it's you make your own story and then it eventually the main story just happens. We haven't seen any zombies. There it is. All right. Well, with that being said, uh, I'm not sure what else I'll cover. I know that we got the Sony press conference and the Ubisoft one coming up. I may do more videos on anything I saw on Xbox, but I love you guys. I'll check out the comments and see what you'd like me to cover. And take it easy.